What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Yes I know this has been a long time since I make a video on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. A lot happened with the phone and the screen broke. This is a replacement screen for this and if you guys don't like the tempered glass which has like a little smaller border over here I would say I can replace it. Let me know in the comments if you don't like this kind of like tempered glass look over here that this is like too short on the screen. So yeah. Today in this video, I'm going to be showing you the latest ROS on this device. Let me actually show you over here. This is the 15th January 2021 build of the ROS official nightly as it says and it literally is because it receives updates every night and this is the Android 11 based ROM of course and as you can see there is the SLNX status as enforcing and there are a lot more changes over here and there are two separate versions one includes the G apps one does not and this particular build is maintained by Srikanth as you can see over here and he's a really good friend of mine he helped me a lot while like I face problems while flashing custom ROMs and stuff so yes a really great guy and a great developer and here we have the arrow is by Srikanth let me actually show you by going into the settings how does it look this is how simple it looks like and of course very stock android ish feeling over here and in the android version we have the arrow os logo up top and if you notice the arrow os version is 11 over here it says and if you tap on it you get this android 11's kind of thing and let me go back from here of course the device shows redmi note 5 pro or wired and the security patch is latest of january 5th 2021 the stock kernel is Tom Baker kernel for ROS and the build date again is January 16th it shows over here. Now let me first talk about the updates. Well I was on the 14th January build over here. Let me show you in the system we have this system updater and as you can see I have tried this OT updater and this particular OT updater does work and if you want to flash this ROM you can follow any flashing guide like from the card right there and that should work super fine. And I have used the latest Orange Fox recovery over here and that worked fine even for the OTA updates. Yes, I have used this particular OTA updater or the system updater that worked fine to update it to the latest build which is the 15th or 16th January build and you can check for updates from here or if you want to export the zip as you can see I have already downloaded this update so I can delete it or I can export this particular zip file as you can see if you tap on export update it will export to a zip file which you can store if you want to flash it later or something so yeah that is great the system updater is working 100% when this Android 11 is this early for the Redmi Note 5 Pro that is just great in my opinion and we have the default keyboard as Gboard because this is a gapps included build and let me show you the home screen and this is actually arrow os launcher here it says and if you want to go into the settings of it this is how it looks we have these many options like notification dots show google app show search bar suggestions you can disable that's a really great thing and this hidden and protected apps is actually something which i like over here let me actually tap the fingerprint scanner so that i can show you you can like lock each particular app from here or you can hide them too if you want to i have locked the telegram app over here which i'll show later maybe but you might have noticed it already while i was opening telegram and here we have the notification gestures and the double tap gestures as well and we have the swipe down to clear all recents so that is great we have all these features let me actually go to the home okay so right now let me tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see as soon as i tap the fingerprint scanner it unlocks that app so this is really cool in my opinion and the stock camera over here is the google camera go edition and this is how it looks like and you can switch to the front camera and stuff that works super fine no issues with that and even for taking normal photos and stuff this camera is really good you can take portrait pictures too that's great and we have also the video mode and in there as you can see there is no settings kind of thing but you can only see for how long you can shoot videos so that's great let me go back the stock camera is google camera again it works flawlessly and swiping down on the stock launcher gets you to the notification panel of course swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app over here as you are noticing and we have the widgets and stuff working super fine on the home screen and in the quick settings panel this is how it looks and you can add multiple toggles from here as you can see but i would say i cannot find the fps info option but that's fine for me at least because i don't game a lot but yes if you are someone who games a lot and you want to see the fps you cannot do that by default at least over here let me actually show you if you tap and hold on this direct sound okay so it does not do anything you can just enable or disable the direct sound i guess 
and from here we have this android 11 screen recorder and as you can see we have this device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time with the screen recorder so that is great and we have the do not disturb dark theme etc options peak notifications you can disable that right now let me jump into the settings and show you some more stuff here we have the battery settings this is how it looks like and of course as you can see the battery animation looks fine and we have the last full charge the screen on time and the battery manager battery temperature shows up you can also change the scale of it and here we have the battery charging light you can have it even on do not disturb yes it does show up while you are charging or something and we have the battery percentage if you enable it it will enable the battery percentage on the status bar right here right now let me show you the display settings here we have the brightness level dark theme and stuff and you can if you are in the dark mode let me show you you can control it to raven black dark gray or the night style solarized dark and the device default is kind of a grayish look but i have been using it with the raven black works super fine here with the dark theme looks very cool and we have the night light adaptive brightness and inside styles and wallpapers let me show you in the wallpaper section we have this on device wallpaper as the arrow is wallpaper looks very cool and you can also add live wallpapers then inside styles you can set up a custom theme and you can change the grid view to six by six i mean up to six by six and we have these kind of clock style these are lock screen clock presets inside lock screen we have this lock screen charging info so that's cool we have the wake screen for notification then we have the fingerprint unlock this is a very cool feature that we have the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner let me actually show you as i have enabled it already let me reboot the device once and right now if i tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it has unlocked so always unlock with the fingerprint scanner is working flawlessly then we have the double tap to wake and the enable blur option and we have the weather option and you can customize or enable it if you want to then inside status bar items we have the headset bluetooth etc icons like the volte vpn etc those icons you can enable as you like it let me go back we have the sound settings and if you scroll down we have the me audio detect and the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is working flawlessly no issues you can change it between these many headphones options and of course with me audio direct sound quality is great and we have the choose preset options let me go back we have the dial pad tones screen locking sound charging for sound vibration etc touch sound and we have the vibrate for calls and even you can change the volume panel to the left as you can see if i enable it right now the volume panel shows up on the left side and if you disable it right now the volume panel should be showing up on the right side so very simplistic over here and you can ex expand it of course as you are noticing now if you scroll down in the security of course there is no face unlock option as of right now but only fingerprint scanner option is there let me actually show you the fingerprint scanner speed quickly and on the stock launcher again we have the double tap to sleep anywhere so that is very helpful let me tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it has unlocked let me tap it again and as you can see it is unlocking very very fast and the fingerprint scanner in my experience i would say it is very reliable fingerprint scanner over here right now let me jump into the button settings and we have the enable advanced restart option of course and here we have this kind of power menu and this is how it looks we have this google home kind of controls and we have the power off and restart option if you tap restart as you can see there is the reboot to system recovery hot reboot and the bootloader option too so that is cool you can directly reboot to recover your fast boot from here of course and from the power menu and actions we have the screen record screenshot options you can enable those and we have invert layout if you're using two or three button navigation and we have playback control volume wake up and stuff like that then in the gestures we have the quickly open camera option if you want to enable that you can and we have the long press for torch and long press power button to toggle torch is working flawlessly i have tested that and in the system navigation gestures let me show you the settings we have the gesture bar length customization and the dead zone customization and of course left right edge sensitivity customization is there and two and three button navigation is of course there let me go back we have the swipe to take screenshot and of course this is working fine asus kind of screenshot taking option you can share it delete it or edit it from here let me go back we have this power menu controls and you can disable the device control if you want to and in terms of the performance let me actually open a couple of apps over here so that i can show you the app run of speeds and the ram management on this rom let me actually open facebook play store youtube right now let's actually open all the apps from memory okay so chrome is still in memory this file explorer is still in memory facebook is still in memory okay so i did not open twitter right now let me open it Okay, sometimes if I am going home, it's going to the sideways. I do not know why. 
maybe because I'm used to other devices with uh, like swipe up. Twitter is in memory, YouTube still in memory, Google Chrome still in memory and right now let me switch to Facebook still in memory, Twitter is still in memory and YouTube again still in memory. So I would say the performance is good enough and this is what you would expect of with a budget device which has launched way back and still receiving custom ROM updates with latest Android 11. And here are the Android 2 and Geekbench score for this ROM. And if you're wondering about the IR Blaster and stuff, let me actually show you. This IR Blaster works flawlessly. If you are noticing here in this ROM, IR Blaster works perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever with the IR Blaster. And in terms of the banking apps, as you can see, it passes the safety net test. So that means Google Pay or any other banking apps should not be a problem in this ROM. Even though on all other devices with custom ROMs, banking apps are going a little bit weird because CTS profile match fails because of Google. But here that's not the case. And here the safety net passes right out of the box. So you can use banking apps like Google Pay right out of the box. And if you're wondering about the recent panel, this is how it looks like as you can see. And you can clear all the apps just from the bottom. You don't have to go all the way to the left side to actually clear all. That is a really great feature. And you can take a screenshot from here too. And we cannot like select over here the text, I think. Even if you hold on it, as you can see, we cannot select, but that's fine. And you can go to the split screen mode or the apps info, or you can pin a particular app from here by just tapping on the logo of that particular app what you are like looking at on the recent panel. So that's been it guys about the Arrow OS Android 11 on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.